This week, Panthan seeks to remove enemies from Venal. A Ragnarok picks a target in a new home staging system. Slice bait a capital gate camp. A Titan is lost through misplaced trust. Hidden Leaf Village Ninja Assassin Squad Esports and Really Strong Alliance continue to clash. White Sky prove they're not easy to bait. Triumvirate make their appearance in the southeast. Drakaris prove to be a thorn in the side of Fire Coalition. Red Menace Coalition complete their region move. Pandemic Horde get a memorable kill. A Titan warps to an asteroid belt and never returns. Something happens in Pochven and Frederick Von Holtz strikes again. Hello, I'm Frost and this is your weekly EVE Online update. Welcome back. So as you may have gathered from the headlines, Eve is most certainly not dead. In fact, it is very active and vibrant and a lot of stuff has been going on. Although notably, it has been mostly going on around low sec and NPC space this week. So I mean, I've got lots of things to cover. I will try and rattle through it as quick as I can. Uh, in the meantime, though, obviously, I have to announce the winners of the Scope Syndication Skins. Uh, so I have some uh, old winners to come through. So from the 4th of January episode, I have Jabbar Skarab. From the 11th of January episode, I have Nadi Izia. Uh, and then from last week's episode, that's the 18th of January, uh, I'm going to try and pronounce this right, Rimbol Sehenstalaz is a winner. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Nocturne Edits... Uh, you have not uh, got in touch with me. That is your YouTube name. Please get in touch with me so that I can give you your Venture Scope Syndication skin. And I have a couple of more Venture skins to give away a little bit later on in the show. Right. So before I jump up to my box, I need to make a correction. It's quite a big correction. I kind of got a little bit carried away uh, when I was talking last week about super capitals on the move. So I mentioned that uh, the initiative had moved their super capitals into Esoteria on the Keepstar that they anchored there the other week. And I said that uh, Fire Coalition were moving their supers. In fact, they were not moving their supers, they were moving capitals. So I kind of went all Kermit, like ah, ah, just getting all super excited of the potential of the super capital escalation. But unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be the case at this stage. So there you go, quick little correction on my part. The other thing as well is uh, the br.eve tool site seems to be a little bit buggy. Uh, this came up on my Discord today that I was looking at a BR a battle report and it came up with different figures than it should have done. So uh, if I do bring up anything from BR Eve Tools, just be aware that if there's anything that's not quite right there, it is not me trying to fudge the figures. It is that uh, BR Eve Tools is doing some strange things at the moment, possibly due to ESI API problems. All right. OK, so let me jump up into my box. Uh, as usual, we have Dotland in front of us. Thank you, Walari, for Dotland. Uh, I think I have my pen at the ready. Uh, and uh, we are going to go into uh, Fade. Well, no, actually, we won't actually go into the system. I'll just uh, ring it here. The reason I want to just touch on Fade quickly uh, is we're going to start with uh, Snuffed Out and Capital Fusion, who are going to come up a lot in the news this week. They've been very, very busy. Uh, and what it is, is uh, basically Snuffed Out and Capital Fusion managed to uh, catch a Fortizar uh, from the fact that, um, yeah, so basically I think this was anchoring. Uh, I don't think it was at the stage it was being dropped because the, the fact that they um, they get the legions in there so quick, it must have been on a 24-hour timer, so it must have been on the anchoring stage. But it wasn't contested, so uh, clearly um, we informed Volta, the corporation, in, uh, we sought mines and we informed Volta, thought they could ninja drop it, you know, drop it without anybody noticing. Uh, but clearly some eyes are out there, spotted it, and uh, it died uncontested. All right, so the main uh, news in terms of kind of nullsec blocks uh, this week uh, is to do with Venal. So Venal is uh, up here and it's an NPC space. So in other words, you can't take the sovereignty uh, and it affects um, obviously um, Panfam in this direction. Oh, that was an awful arrow. Let me start again. There we go. Panfam in this direction. And then it also projects into kind of fraternity space in this direction and then up here it goes over to um, greater trash community as well. So it does kind of affect a lot of uh, different groups. Now, if we actually go into Venal, uh, there's a number of systems that are flashpoints. Now, uh, a number of groups are there. Most notably, Boss is one of the groups that are there. Uh, I think Rokapel is there as well. I think Arcos Corsal has some stuff up there as well. But essentially, uh, Northern Coalition, PAMFAM, in uh, PAMFAM generally, and specifically Northern Coalition, have said that they want to remove all of the groups that are basically blopsing, uh, doing black ops drops out of there uh, and want to remove the structures that are there. So they're, they're planning on glassing the, uh, the, this, the, the whole region. 
Now, some fights broke out, uh, primarily uh, in GVZ, uh, where there is one Fortizar there that belongs to Boss. I believe there's another Fortizar in QHJ. Uh, I think there's another one down here somewhere, I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there's, there's about three, uh, uh, four or five boss structures that are going to be removed. And there's a couple of others as well. I think this one belongs to My Little Pony up here. But what has been happening is uh, two things. So the first thing is Northern Coalition or NCDOT have been dropping um, uh, Astra houses on grid with the Fortizar. And as you'll see from the battle reports later, there's the reason why. Uh, so let's look at the first battle report. In fact, let's just jump straight in there. So um, you can see the groups that are kind of defending uh, Vino from this uh, aggression from uh, Panfam and also from uh, Winter Co. Uh, you've got obviously Brotherhood of Spacers, you've got Dread Bomb, which is part of Wrecking Crew, uh, dock, walk, dock Workers, Deepwater Hooligans, uh, Psychotic Tendencies, Tissue Who Are in Geminate, uh, Rope Capel, who are obviously very active in, uh, in Pochven. Uh, and Arcos Core, which I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, then obviously snuffed out, uh, sometimes get bat phone for this as well, and uh, come in on the side of the kind of the venal defense side. Uh, then on this particular battle report, you can see that uh, NC Dot is there, but then after that we have Winter Co, you know, with uh, Fraternity Blades of Grass, etc. no visual, and then Pan Fam uh, Slice Pirates. Anyway, so you get the general idea here, uh, this was over, I, th I think this was possibly over the anchoring of an Astra house. Uh, but the main thing was, was that you see that uh, 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 Northern Coalition or NCDOT brought primarily Serbs, uh, Winterco brought sacrileges. So kind of hack stuff, uh, whilst um, most of the, uh, the venal defense side was on in Loki's in T3Cs, obviously a few Serbs and sac sacrileges there as well. But as things progress, uh, these uh, structures actually got anchored and in fact when uh, the anchoring of the disaster houses took place uh, on the Keepstar uh, that belongs to fraternity in Venal there was uh, NC Dot were there, Slice were there, uh, also um, Test Alliance have shown up uh, and Pandemic Legion. In fact you can see them all here on this fight and then fraternity as well is showing up for some of these timers. So those are all the groups that are affecting, uh, basically attacking Brotherhood of Spacers. And obviously we see Form Volta here as well come in uh, and uh, Greater Trash Community as a whole, because I see toilet paper in there as well, coming in to defend. Out of the Blue used to be up in this part of the world. Obviously they're all the way down in Paragon Soul, which we'll cover a little bit later on. Uh, but they, there's uh, lots of different groups that are happy to come along to, uh, to Venal and to protect the residents that are there at the moment. So uh, with this one, the main thing that you'll see is that obviously the losses were a little bit bigger here on the defense side. Uh, the defense was just trying to traditional uh, defense of lots of ravens on the structure. Uh, and then uh, we from Volta, or Great Trash Community, should I say, brought their kind of signature nightmares, uh, which is super expensive, but they managed to save most of them. Uh, as you can see here with the ravens that took the brunt of the damage. But uh, the key thing is, is that the reason why these Astra houses were anchored by NC Dot is as you can see on the left hand side now, lots and lots and lots of carriers. So they're basically sky netting and sending in loads of carriers and overwhelming the defenses with the carriers. And then obviously we've got you know, a few hacked fleets as usual. I know that you can have a null block fleet without some, some uh, Munins and Serbs showing up there because all Munins this time. I'm not even gonna keep scrolling. Is it all the Munins, all the Munins, hacks are ammo, right? Okay, so, um, and that's kind of going, what's going on right now with, um, with Venal. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that and we'll see uh, if another, any other groups come to, uh, to contest this. As of yet, uh, no Fortizars have died that belong to the residents of Venal. Uh, that may change. I think we're kind of in armor timer with a lot of these right now. So we'll, I'll keep an eye on how this all progresses. All right, then coming back to our map, our universe map. Uh, obviously, I mean, I was obviously, obviously, uh, one of the reasons why Fraternity is kind of getting involved with this is Fraternity are kind of on vacation right now. Uh, obviously, their whole um, uh, attack on, uh, on Army of Mango uh, was supposed to take sort of three, three weeks or so. It all kind of ended in a week, a uh, week and a bit, and so they kind of got some spare time now. So they are kind of sort of semi-officially on vacation, and they are... Uh, obviously just trying to find things to do, which is probably one of the reasons why they're coming into to this whole Venal thing as well. All right, so now uh, we're gonna, I've got quite a few videos to show you this week. And as always, the videos are always linked in the description below. 
So this is a Ragnarok. So as you know, a Ragnarok is our drive-by shooter in his Ragnarok Titan. Uh, but the thing I wanted to point out was obviously last week he killed a, a Horde pilot. This week he actually killed a Paladin in the system of R10-GN, which is the staging system for Pandemic Horde. So here's a Paladin minding his own business, shooting his rats. And here comes a Ragnarok who is going to single shot him. Uh, right now, I can see Sibos are all on, and uh, we will see that basically the Paladin just get extinguished, and there we go, and now he's going to head off again. But uh, primary, before, uh, a Ragnarok used to basically go into 4-H in Veil of the Silent, which was the staging system of uh, Fraternity, and uh, obviously now Capital Fusion are no longer part of Pandemic Horde, which we'll come on to as well in a minute. That's also another part of the news, uh, even though I've covered it in the last couple of weeks, it is still relevant now. Uh, and uh, he is now going into pandemic horde staging and uh, shooting stuff there. So there you go. All right, so uh, before uh, we go on to anything else, we are going to go into uh, basically Empire Space now. So there's been lots of stuff going on in Empire Space in all parts. So there's been stuff going on in Lone Trek, uh, and I think we had stuff in uh, Metropolis over here. We've had stuff happen in Hamatar. Uh, we've got stuff happen as well in... Uh, Kador and Gen Genesis as well. So, uh, where's Kador? Kador's over here, and Genesis is uh, over here somewhere. Where's Genesis? I can't even see it. Oh, there it is. Genesis is there. All right, so those are all the areas that we're going to talk about now. So, the first one is uh, in the system of Pasari in uh, Losec in Lone Trek, uh, there was a slice pilot in an Okator kind of on some trip, which is kind of far away from where. Um, um, slice of Solaris Stonium actually live uh, so um, clearly it was on some kind of random trip through uh, through Lone Trek went through Pisari got shot by a, a gate camp of capitals and so uh, Slice decided to respond to this and baited with a badger and baited this gate camp now what was interesting with this was a couple of things first of all there was a, a video uh, once again I'll link the description you can see they actually found a wormhole uh, there was a wormhole that linked straight into Pasari, and so they were able to get a subcap fleet to uh, Pasari through this wormhole. They then sent a badger through. The badger then created the bait. Uh, they then landed on the caps and then started shooting them. Now, these caps came from all kinds of different groups, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Let me just pause this video and come back to the battle report. As I said, video's linked in the description below. Uh, you can see, I mean, we've got people from, um, you know, we've got Snuffed Out, You Are Dunked. Hang on, let me just do that properly. Snuffed Out, You Are Dunked, Reform Volta. <laughs> uh, you know, so a whole bunch of uh, different groups there on this uh, gate camp. So clearly a group of, of friends rather than a, a particular allegiance to uh, an alliance, etc. But as well as the subcaps, uh, what is interesting is that uh, Slice of Solaria Stonium apparently had a couple of dreads kicking around in that region as well that they were able to bring to that. So uh, there you go. So yeah, they just basically used uh, cheap stuff like Hurricanes and uh, was it Cormorants uh, and some Thrashers, uh, but they didn't manage to get themselves sort of 25 billion isk of, uh, of uh, kills there with just sort of less than a billion loss. So that was quite a good result for them. So there you go. So that was uh, kind of the, the whole situation with that gate camp. Now, the next one is a story about a Titan that was destroyed. Now, um, let me see. There it is. So this Titan belonged to Pandemic Horde. Unfortunately, this particular pilot does not watch my show. Otherwise, um, this pilot would have been very aware that Capital Fusion are no longer part of Pandemic Horde. And so uh, this pilot got in touch with um, one of the pilots of Capital Fusion uh, and said, and, uh, can you help me? Because, you know, uh, talking to Aragnarok, can you help me with, uh, with my Titan? And uh, Aragnarok um, said, sure. Uh, and he lit a Sino on his own structure. Uh, but as soon as the Titan then jumped, uh, he basically got caught by... Um, not only uh, Capital Fusion, but Snuffed Out, and uh, I think a couple of other groups went in, but you'll see. So basically, the pilot jumped in unaware that um, Capital Fusion were now actually his enemy. Uh, and uh, as, basically, as soon as he came out of invulnerability, uh, you can see now all of the caps, uh, all of the, the uh, <laughs> all of the blobs dropping, all of the battle rocks dropping. 
uh, to, uh, to pin down this Titan. It was kind of dual tanked as well, so it did take a little while to die, but there was very little that the pilot could do, and it was destroyed. So there we go. This is also why uh, the title, Know Your Enemy, is so important. Uh, as you can see, we've got Capital Fusion and Snuffed Out, where I think were the two primary groups that were there. Uh, yeah, so Capital Fusion and Snuffed Out were the, the two groups involved in that. And so we have another Titan loss. So there you go. So lesson to be learned there. Uh, it's not a case to trust no one, but uh, just be very, very careful that you do your uh, your background work on uh, who you're jumping your Titan to uh, if you're going to rely on other people to move your Titan about or to do stuff with your Titan. All right, so uh, then uh, we're going to go, still in Metropolis, we're going to go over to Asset. Now in Asset, or Azet, I don't know how you pronounce that, it's, it's with a single S, I assume it's Azet. Uh, what we had here is a situation um, between um, really strong alliance and uh, Hidden Leaf Village Ninja Squad Assassin, e Ninja Assassin Squad Esports. So uh, what was essentially happening was this Athenor, which belonged to Localist Primary, which is the Amar Militia, was being hit. And it was being hit by uh, Shadow Cartel. So Shadow Cartel brought a whole bunch of Tempests to uh, shoot this structure. And uh, Hidden Leaf Village, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Hidden Leaf Village came along uh, to assist uh, Localist Primary. So they brought along a bunch of Tempest Fleet issues. Uh, to support the uh, the APOC navies that local or primary were doing. So, as a consequence of this, the uh, the Tempest from Shadow Cartel were unable to break through, uh, to break kind of tank and actually do the damage on the ethanol. So they backphoned uh, Really Strong Alliance. Uh, really Strong Alliance then dropped a bunch of Horde Reds. Uh, but uh, Hidden Leaf, uh, here we go. So I've actually got another video. Here we go. So link in the description. So you can see that Arizu there, the uh, ticker of Bisex is, uh, or Bisex is, um, is the ticker of um, Really Strong Alliance. So it lit a sign, it lit a Sino and the cap started to jump in. Uh, what unfortunately happened here was the, uh, the cap sieged, uh, but what they didn't expect was all of the focus of uh, of Localist Primary and of uh, Hidden Leaf Village to go completely onto the uh, onto the dreads. And so they were able to shoot the dreads before they were able to come out of siege. So they didn't even need to pin them down. The, the actual dreads had actually pinned themselves down. So uh, the end result of that, as you can see, it's only a very short video. It was more to show that the rushing onto this was the uh, was the, the basically the butcher's bill of 73 billion lost uh, as a consequence of that drop. So uh, a pretty hefty one there. Now, uh, all of this ties in as well. There's something I need to make very clear, is that there is a lot of history between Hidden Leaf Village Ninja Assassin Squad Esports and Really Strong Alliance, because Soy Boys, which was a corporation in Hidden Leaf Village Ninja Assassin Squad Esports, moved over to Really Strong Alliance. And so this is very much a case of old friends shooting each other here. So. Um, this also ties into something that happened last week, uh, which I brought up, which was I wasn't sure how this hell died. This hell died on the uh, the Keepstar in Amamaki, and uh, I thought maybe it was like uh, the ACLs got pulled, you know, the docking rights got pulled, and that's why it died. As I understand, what actually happened here was that uh, this was this hell was associated to really strong alliance, who were trying to bait out Ninja, a Hidden Leaf Village Ninja Assassin Squad esports. Uh, and uh, they had a whole bunch, this is RSA, Really Strong Alliance, had a whole bunch of supers ready for when um, Hidden Leaf Village Ninja Assassin's Squad Esports undocked all of their dreads. But instead, what Hidden Leaf Village did uh, is they undocked Vedmax. Uh, is it Vedmax or Leshax? Leshax, Leshax instead. Uh, they undocked a whole bunch of Leshax, uh, which obviously spool up loads of damage, and shot it with that. So. Uh, the end result of that, if we had to go to the battle report, is that the, uh, the Hell Pilot realized that the, uh, the Dread Bait didn't work or, uh, as planned. Actually undocked a Minikawa to try and save it, uh, to save the Hell, uh, and that didn't happen. Also, the Hell created, uh, um, uh, lost its tether uh, on purpose, I think, as I understand, by actually re launching its fighters, which made it lose its tether, and that was kind of the beginning of the whole, the whole bait that was happening there. So there you go. So that was what happened to that uh, hell last week. Then uh, it all continues to go on. Then in Kador, uh, we had a hell uh, that was destroyed. Now, I don't have much news on this. 
All I know is that it belonged, uh, sorry, that's the wrong one. That is this, hang on, there's, which hell am I looking at now? It was the one in memory, that's not the right one. Uh, let me just go to my super capitals and go to my super carriers. Right, so it was um, this one. So I'm not quite sure what happened here. Uh, it was a white sky hell. It was a hunting hell, you know, so it had nanos. Uh, it had bits, a, um, a hyperspatials on the, uh, on the rigs, just set up for max damage, a quick warp out time with a battleship uh, micro warp drive, SIBOs for quick locking, all that kind of stuff, and max damage, as you can see from the dome damage amplifiers, etc. But it was caught by dark side. So um, White Sky you know, obviously lost a hell there, but the reason I wanted to mention this is because actually, I think it was the very next day, White Sky uh, then had a situation where uh, they were trying to be baited by Fraternity. Now, this is a really interesting one. So uh, this is the, uh, the battle report here. Uh, and what we had is we had a hell from uh, Eastwind. So Eastwind is actually um, a Chinese time zone group that are actually in Omist right now. Uh, and so this hell was on grid. And, I, and we have a video here from White Sky. And uh, as you can see, the hell is on, is on grid here, and White Sky have managed to uh, hard point it with a, uh, a heavy dicta. And everything looks like it's going to plan, right? So, but then uh, White Sky actually were kind of on the ball here. And what they noticed, uh, hang on, let me find the right spot in the, uh, in the video. Oh, here we go, it's gonna come up in a sec. Let's just zoom it. They realized that there's a Thera wormhole, and on this Thera wormhole, was a whole fraternity fleet full of heavy addictors and hurricanes and a whole bunch of other stuff. So White Sky actually realized that uh, this hell was bait and that fraternity was sitting in a wormhole and probably had a whole bunch of dreads to drop on them as well. So they prepared for that and were therefore prepared for a counter drop. And so that is what happened. So they then took the fight uh, and they decided to, uh, to drop loads and loads of dreads uh, not, I don't think they brought any supers. I think it was primarily dreads because the whole point was to kind of bait out the supers. And then on top of that, they also had the time to bat phone. Uh, I assume they bat phoned, uh, snuffed out. So snuffed out uh, showed up in their kind of trademark uh, armor legion doctrine uh, with their guardians and support. And uh, you can see this whole video in its full length as usual from watching it later on. But uh, but yeah, so I actually they did drop a, they actually did drop a couple of supers. Uh, and then a bunch of uh, a bunch of dreads came in with that as well. But the end result was the uh, the bait did not work at all, uh, and it ended up with a loss of uh, 125 billion for fraternity. So uh, white sky or wily? There we go. I think that's the, uh, the the message that we get out of that. And there you go. You can see all the legions, and there was a lot of them as well. <laughs> a lot of legions there from uh, from snuffed out, and uh, a, lot, a lot of devoters as well to to be able to pin down the. Uh, the dreads from the uh, from the fleet that was trying to do the bait. So there you go. So that's that, and I think that's about it for, for all the stuff that's happening in kind of low sec right now. But as you can see, it's been like a super busy week. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the giveaway. So let's do that very quickly. Uh, as always, the way you enter the prize draw, uh, first ship thing is uh, the ship is the venture. Uh, that's the scope syndication skin that I have at the moment. I have two to give away. Uh, and the way you enter the prize draw is you have to make a comment in the YouTube comments down below with a keyword of my choosing. My keyword this week is low sec. You can do that in one word or with a dash in the middle or a hyphen, uh, however you want. But you need to make up a sentence with the words low sec. Uh, and you have until 1800 UTC on Friday the 28th of January to enter. And then I normally do the draw sometime on a Saturday. So check at the end of Saturday, check your YouTube comments to see if you have won and then you can reach me on my Discord. So good luck with that. And uh, right, let's continue with the news. All right, so now we're gonna go back to Dotland and uh, we're now gonna just focus on all the stuff that's been happening in uh, the South. So not so much fights, but kind of more, uh, just kind of general movements and things that are kind of happening in terms of uh, the various groups, various coalitions and stuff trying to establish territory, etc. So the very first thing uh, is actually in Curse. Uh, what is notable is uh, that uh, Triumvirate, uh, if you remember, were in Cloud Ring, were pushed out by, uh, by the initiative, uh, went into low sec uh, to kind of regroup. It looks like they've made an appearance in Curse. And in fact, they actually have uh, an Astra House uh, anchored there. 
if I can find the right battle report. There we go. Good, good job. There we go. So as you can see, they have an Astra House uh, there, obviously for cloning, uh, because I think there are stations in HWL, so they, uh, they can't be pushed out of curse. So they're probably using the Astra House as a, as a clone bay. But a fight broke out. Uh, looks like over this Astra House, uh, numbers uh, were pretty even in terms of kind of losses. Uh, numbers also quite uh, notable were, were very similar. So uh, Triumvirate seemed to be getting the help of uh, not only Wrecking Crew, uh, so that's like Hero, Co Hero Coalition, Weapons of Mass Production, Purple for Habitude Warriors, and Sigma Grind Set, and Rogue Consortium, but also um, CVA seemed to have made the trip over. So CVA have been quite close to Triumvirate. Uh, they have fought with them in Cloud Ring. Uh, they are up in Syndicate. So it looks like they may have deployed over this way as well for some content alongside Triumvirate. So uh, quite interesting to see that. So uh, th pro before this, uh, if you remember, there was some uh, Goon Swarm 6 squads in Curse that were kind of harassing Fire Coalition. It looks like Triumvirate, with the help of Wrecking Crew, are going to kind of take over that role and uh, just kind of push into like Scalding Pass and places like that with uh, against Fire to create some content. So uh, let me scroll down my list. Uh, now let's go over to Tenerife. So uh, with Tenerife, I just want to talk about a, a particular area. So I mentioned this last week, uh, that this whole region here used to belong to one crew. We'll talk about them in a minute. Uh, Drakaris took it over. Uh, I now know as well that Drakaris actually did place their own structures there. They didn't take them from one crew. Uh, and it's been a bit of a thorn in the side, as I mentioned in the headlines, uh, for uh, Fire Coalition. Because Fire Coalition managed to kind of take all these iHubs uh, in this little constellation here. And now Drakaris have managed to take them all back. So almost all of them, there's, there's one left there. Uh, and uh, they are struggling to kind of push Drakaris out. And obviously Drakaris are now very well established in impasse, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, I have a battle report here. Uh, I have so many tabs open this week. Uh, that's a hell, that's a hell. So it must be this one. Okay, so this was one of the, uh, the battles that happened. Uh, as you can see there, the numbers were fairly even uh, with Drakaris pulling out some good numbers all on their own there uh, and actually uh, uh, Fire Coalition needing kind of some extra help from not only uh, Fraternity but also Pandemic Horde and Test Alliance also made a showing there. Uh, and uh, sorry, actually, yeah, so they're actually, Chikaras were very outnumbered on this one, uh, but they actually kind of managed to uh, keep their losses fairly even, so that was pretty impressive. Uh, then uh, another battle report here. Uh, so I think with this one, they actually managed to loot to, to destroy the Astra House. Yeah, so Fire Coalition managed to destroy the Astra House uh, on the next one. Uh, that wasn't the case, but they did manage to do some more losses and not lose as much. But this time, as you can see, Drakaris has slightly no, low numbers, but they had the initiative show up to help them. Obviously, the initiative now in Eresoteria, and we'll cover that when we come on to Eresoteria. So, uh, so, and um, yeah, we go, we can see Tess there showed up for this one as well to uh, help Fire Coalition. So that's kind of what's going on in Tenerife. Then uh, now what we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to talk about um, Impasse. So Impasse used to be the home of Red Menace Coalition. Uh, and you can see now that it's almost been completely taken over by Jakaris in the west and uh, Esports Bitopia in the east. Now Esports Bitopia, I mentioned before, a uh, Chinese time zone group uh, made their kind of entrance in the Alliance tournament. They were very notable there. It looks like they're taking a lot of sob. They're only a group of like 60 pilots or so, or 60 members in their, in their alliance. Uh, so they're very small. Uh, but clearly there is some kind of relationship going on between the two groups here. Uh, so I don't know if it's Sports Bitopia a part of the Imperium yet, or whether there's kind of just a, an agreement between Jakaris alone with Esports Bitopia. And because it's far away from Delve and Quirius, etc., that the Imperium aren't kind of getting involved with that. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. And then obviously, finally, we have this uh, one system remaining with uh, Red Alliance, which uh, has the uh, Red Alliance Keepstart that is there in 68 FT. And I would imagine it will probably be transferred or sold onto Jakaris if Jakaris decide to make this kind of a more permanent home. Also, I need to mention that uh, Sorry in Advance said that I mentioned this system completely wrong. It's not called Sixy Mo, it's called Sexy Meow. So I have now been corrected. And yes, there was a Keepstar in there, as I remembered, but the Keepstar didn't belong to um, Sorry in Advance. It was actually Eternal Requiem or Requiem Eternal. I can't remember which way around they were at the time that the Keepstar was destroyed, which was destroyed, I think, on the 8th of August, 2021. So there you go. So that's the story there. So now we can move down into Esoteria, uh, which is where Red Menace Coalition have gone to. And uh, you can see uh, right here, 
Uh, now we've got um, all of these areas to the east there of the pink is all Red Menace Coalition now. Uh, so you've got Alliance of Respect, Honor, Passion, um, Federation of Respect, Honor, Passion, Alliance up there in the green. Uh, we've got Sorry in Advance in the bottom left there. Uh, this is the, this system I'm highlighting in the blue. The constellation there is the last one that Red Alliance took that was AOM. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, also I should also mention the Stain Roos have kind of got their favorite kind of regions here, uh, which are all the ones that are kind of within jump range. Jump range. I think I think all of this area is in jump range of Stain, so they like having this whole pipe as well. Uh, so Stain Roos and, and uh, Red Men's Coalition seem to have settled at those borders at the moment. Uh, this system is still AOM at the top here because it has a Red Alliance Keep Star in there. that used to belong to AOM. I assume that's going to be flipped at some point. Uh, and of course, we still have as well in DHP NP9, we have the um, initiative for, uh, Keep Star that is anchored there, was anchored there last week. Uh, and we know from the destruction of the R ARKN Keep Star that they actually brought their super capitals to this Keep Star. Whether they actually took them back since then, whether they just brought them for the R ARKN, I don't know. Uh, so they may not actually be deployed there. Uh, and that Keep Star may just be there for the time being. And uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on it and see what happens and see whether it actually stays there or not. Because we haven't seen much from the initiative in terms of activity in this region. So who knows? All right. Uh, then also on the border here uh, with uh, Esoteria, we have Paragon Soul. Uh, it's worth noting that um, Out of the Blue, uh, who are Vapor, have now taken pretty much all of, uh, all of the Sov now in Paragon Soul. So if you remember Out of the Blue tried to make a home in Omist, uh, that didn't work out well. Fire Coalition said no uh, and were pretty adamant about it and overwhelmed them and pushed them right out. Uh, and it looks like now that uh, uh, Out of the Blue or Vapor have uh, tied up with Red Menace Coalition uh, and uh, therefore now taking Sob in Paragon Sob. This was all uh, Army of Mango Sob, by the way, or, or Red Alliance Sob. So uh, that's that. Also worth mentioning as well with Esoteria, I mentioned one crew. Uh, I know what happened to one crew now. One crew used to be an alliance that was part of Red Menace Coalition. Uh, they've now merged all of the alliance into one corporation called One Crew. And then that corporation is then joining into what could possibly go wrong, which is one of the alliances in Red Menace Coalition. So there you go. So that kind of explains what's going on there. All right. Uh, then I need to talk about something in Quirious. So in Quirious, um, it was this one. There we go. In Quirious, um, there was a pandemic horde uh, roaming fleet, uh, a cheapy fleet of stabbers who ended up in Quirious. Now, uh, if you remember from a few weeks ago, I talked to, I had a headline called Martial Law, and that uh, was talking about how the Imperium have taken to dropping Black Ops battleships uh, for home defense rather than capitals, uh, and they do like to, uh, to do it in a showy fashion by bringing in as many marshals as possible, uh, as you can see here. Uh, also, there was the odd vehement there, which is a, uh, a Serpentis Dread, so that's a pirate faction Dread, which just showed up for the lols apparently, but the stabbers, uh, before they, um, they, well actually most of them got away, but the stabbers actually got themselves, not only the kill they were after, which was the golem kill, which was the uh, the whaling kill they wanted, but uh, the defense fleet that dropped, they actually managed to kill one of the marshals. And of all the marshals they killed, they killed a very, very blingy one. So here is the marshal kill. Uh, you could see it ramps up at just under 14 billion primarily due to the fact that it has uh, officer mods, officer mod, uh, officer mod, <laughs> uh, and then we have a, a dead space mod, uh, and then here, here, and here are dead space mods. Uh, and then on top of that, we had uh, a whole bunch of abyssal modules, uh, which don't even, oops, that wasn't one, that was one, which don't even show up on the uh, the, bath, the uh, kill mail, which are obviously very, very valuable if they've been, uh, rolled uh, from, let's say, faction modules. And uh, we'll never know exactly how good they were. But anyway, so the end result of that was that it was a 13 billion kill uh, for a bunch of uh, stabbers. So that was an extremely good result for them. Uh, and uh, yeah, so their losses were like 2.86 billion and obviously the marshal accounted for that as well as for the golem. So there you go. So uh, yeah, good little Rome, uh, Rome result there. Right, then in Fountain, 
Uh, we had another uh, Titan die this week. So obviously we had the uh, the Avatar we talked about earlier. We had a Ragnarok uh, die that is a Titan of the type of Ragnarok, not the player. Uh, this player, I believe, uh, is from the Chinese time zone and possibly ex regiment regiment uh, Decided to warp to an asteroid belt, as I understand, to kill a, sp a dread spawn. Uh, there was a blue scout uh, in the area, so there's an AWOC scout uh, that spotted the, uh, Ragnar the Ragnarok and then snuffed out and Capital Fusion. As you can see, Capital Fusion are now flying a lot with snuffed out, even though they're not formally together. They are seen together for a lot of these uh, drops, etc. And, uh, and yeah, so the, uh, the Titan was destroyed. So that was that. Uh, fairly, fairly, uh, fairly to the point on that one, I think. All right. Then uh, also in Fountain, uh, worth noting uh, the Bastion, you know, who moved in there quite recently uh, when, uh, when they decided to take some space. Uh, they have now actually anchored a, a keep star in A-HZYL, thereby cementing their home in Fountain. All right. Uh, then I have uh, in Pochfen, I have no reason to explain it. I have no idea what's going on uh, in Ota Nuomi in Pochfen. This only happened like an hour or two before I started filming the, the, uh, this show. Um, Pandemic Horde lost 25 billion uh, to Snuffed Out, Rote Capel, and uh, yeah, primarily Snuffed Out and Rote Capel. Looks like, a, I don't know, a couple of paladins may have been ratting there. Uh, and then uh, Snuffed Out showed with a whole bunch of paladins, uh, 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 sorry, uh, Marauders, so paladins and Kronos and a ton of Leshaks uh, with their usual Nestors to, uh, to back them up, some Balgorns, so yeah, that wasn't going to end well. And it looks like Panamic Horde brought some Mowers and, uh, and some Tempest, so yeah, that was going to be a one-sided fight, so that was that. I'm, I assume the Paladins were ratting, I don't know why they were there. Uh, maybe someone from Panamic Horde that was in these fleets could uh, get in touch with me and let me know so I can update everybody on my Twitch show on Friday as to what actually happened there. So, uh, and then we're going to close off the show with an AT ship. So, Frederick Von Hull has done it again. Frederick Von Hull, our famous AT ship hunter, has bagged another one. This time it is a Virtuoso. Uh, it is a uh, Alliance 15 uh, prize ship. Uh, and uh, he, he found it in a wormhole, apparently, uh, and uh, has uh, added another notch on his belt with regards to his AT ship kill. So congratulations there to Von Hull for managing to find yet another one. Quite amazing how he does that. Okay, then uh, last piece of news. Um, not really so much news, just uh, a notable uh, thing to, to just point out. is I was looking at the Fortizar kills uh, for this week and a lot of stuff dying in wormholes. Uh, all different ones as well. There doesn't seem to be any particular pattern to them. Uh, I don't know whether it was kind of like Black Friday clear out, uh, or actually those are a little bit later in the week, but uh, they're just lots of Fortizars being destroyed in wormholes. So there you go. I don't have the story on those. Uh, as always, the wormhole groups are, are kind of very shy, don't talk to me very much. Uh, so I don't really get into the news in, as to what happened. Uh, but I'm always interested to know. Uh, so if any of these groups want to get in touch with me and kind of get me up to date on these events, then that would be awesome. Right, so that's it for me this week. Uh, hopefully I didn't take too long. I tried to uh, go through it as quickly as possible, even though there's a lot of news. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. Please do mention me in your Corp Discords, your Alliance Discords. We're getting close to 7,000 subscribers now, which is absolutely epic. So help put the word out and let's uh, bump it up to 7,000 and then we can aim for the 10,000. All right, that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Until the next one, bye.